Well, welcome to another episode of Amazing Plastic. I'm your host, Richard Cleveland. Thanks for joining me today. This is episode number nine. We've been away for a while. Uh, we've been uh, taking care of stuff here at Naked 8 Productions, uh, which has kept us away from actually uploading and getting some shows done. And then, of course, we had some, some family issues, but I'm not going to get into that because that's not what you're here for. You're here about model building, the skills that make us great as model builders and turns that ordinary plastic into what else? But amazing plastic. A uh, few things I want to cover today. Um, we've got a brand new sponsor on the show and we are really happy to welcome PM Hobbycraft. Uh, they're a local hobby store located here in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. They have a wonderful website for anybody that is looking for plastic models, RC, or any type of hobby that you might be interested in. And they have given us, as a bonus, a offer code to help you get 10% off your plastic model kits. And that offer code is AMZ-214-PLS. dash dash And you can find that right down below there. We'll show you, uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Like I said, um, just use that offer code when you go to pmhobbycraft.ca. Go into their plastic models. If you see something you like, order it up and get yourself 10% off on that. And they ship internationally. So they'll ship to the U.S., to Canada, all over Canada, into uh, the U.K. and other uh, countries around the world. We also want to, or I actually want to talk to you a little bit about one of our members who has got his own store online now. He's not officially a sponsor, but you know what? We want to give him a little bit of recognition. He's got all kinds of super detailing parts for your uh, car kits, and that's Extreme Scale Model Detail, or pardon me, Extreme Scale Detail dot com. So go and check out Extreme scale detail.com they're a brand new store they're looking for new customers sign up there and uh, find out when they get new products in and check out some of the videos that they've got on there as well it's a great little website and they've got some a, a ton of great stuff if you're trying to trick out your 125th scale or larger car kit that's the place to go uh, I also want to thank all of our subscribers here's something you guys can pat yourselves on the back right now because of you we have hit 639 subscribers as of today uh, and we have over 10,000 views on the website. We're not even a year old so thank you very much for uh, enjoying what you see on Amazing Plastic, enjoying what you uh, see on the show and uh, you know, liking what we do here. Uh, Google Plus Community also is continuing to grow. Uh, we are now at 725 members. Keep it up, guys, because we're going to keep moving forward. Uh, we also want to thank uh, all of the members over at Facebook and Twitter as well, uh, those guys that follow us over there. Another new announcement coming. We are updating our website. It's going to be a lot different, a lot easier to navigate. Uh, that is coming in June, a brand new style of website that you guys can, can go and check out. You'll be able to find all of our show videos up there. Um, and really, uh, it's going to be an exciting adventure. We're also going to have our own store, so you'll be able to get T-shirts, uh, and all kinds of other goodies there as well. You won't be going to Cafe Press anymore. You'll actually be coming to our store. We're going to run it ourselves. And there'll be some other nifty items in there that you guys uh, might find interesting. Uh, on to the Jimmy Fun build. Um, that has been extended for all of you that don't know, uh, that are taking part in the Jimmy Fund charity auction build. Um, that's been extended to the end of April. Uh, I want to give everybody a, a really good chance to finish the kits that they started uh, and really help us to raise a nice uh, donation for uh, the Jimmy Fund who who helps to uh, cancer research for children and adults all over the world. So they're an international uh, organization, but they're based out of uh, Boston. And uh, I really want you guys, if you've signed up to be a part of it, please complete your kits, get us some pictures, post them on uh, the Google Plus community over at uh, googleplus.com and uh, just look for Amazing Plastic. If you're not a member yet, become a member. There's all kinds of great stuff up there. Watch people do their builds and uh, we've got some exciting stuff that's going to be happening. Um, 
What else did I want to talk about? Really quickly, uh, Cafe Press Store uh, that we have now for T-shirts and things like this, like the coffee mug and and the aprons and stuff like that, uh, is only going to be up until the end of June. Uh, we will be moving a lot of that product over to our new website, um, so you'll be able to get your T-shirts and stuff there. And speaking of T-shirts... Uh, You'll know at the top of the show I talked about PM Hobbycraft. They actually gave me this wonderful T-shirt. I'm just going to stand up and show it to you. Keep calm and get a hobby. So uh, I think that uh, that's pretty much spells it all out when we're talking about hobbies and what we do as far as scale model building goes. Um, we've got uh, some exciting stuff on the back burner. A lot of stuff coming up. We're going to be doing some uh, interesting builds in upcoming shows. Um, so you want to stay tuned for that. We are also taking on today the Creature from the Black Lagoon. I know I've been promising you guys that we were going to do some painting on this. And today I'm going to show you how we did the skin texture on the uh, victim uh, that you see the creature holding here. This kit is from Mobius. It is a 1-8 scale, um, and it is a skill level 3, and I didn't really find it that hard to do as a skill level 3. So let's uh, go to the bench, and we'll show you how we did the painting on that. All right, so we're here at the bench. And we are going to be painting up our figure today. And uh, in this case, we are using uh, the figure of Julie Adams uh, from the 1950s version of Creature from the Black Lagoon. She's already been pre-primed with uh, Vallejo primer. And uh, so that's an acrylic primer that we can use um, to get, uh, you know, to prime our figures. And it's non-toxic and it's pretty simple to use uh, through an airbrush. Now, the paints we're going to be using, if you watched last week, we talked about mixing your own flesh colors, and that's what we're doing today. I'm just going to move her out of the way. We're going to be using a selection of artist acrylics today, and the ones that we are using um, to get the basic flesh tones will be these three, and that is burnt sienna, raw sienna, and white. So we're going to use those three. We've already pre-mixed our base color which is right here, and by using those three. And you can usually use those three to make any Caucasian flesh that you wish. Um, you can also, by adding a little bit more raw sienna to this mix, I could make it an Asian skin tone. Uh, but we are going to use this that we've already pre-mixed. Now, we also have red oxide, which we're going to use uh, with our flesh color. We're going to tone it down with our flesh color. A little bit later when we uh, go to do the tops of the shoulders and the knees and the elbows, uh, just to give them a little bit of a sun-looked or worn look uh, to her body. Um, so we just, we're just we going to use a little bit of this uh, red oxide paint as well with this. And we'll show you how we mix that up in just a little bit. But let's get started uh, with mixing up some paint into our color cup. And we'll start uh, laying down some flesh color. So we'll be right back. All right, so we've got our figure here. We've got our our uh, airbrush loaded up with our color. Now I just want to test our color and make sure that uh, my airbrush is working correctly. And how I do that is I just write my name. There we go. I could get in a little bit closer. There we go. Okay, so that seems to be working. It's not clogging. I'm going to take the tip off here. Oh, not the entire tip, just the one tip. There we go. Now, the reason I'm doing this is so that I can get a much finer line later on. And you'll notice when I write my name again, how now we're getting a little bit of tip dry already. That's because our paint's a little bit thick. We'll try this again. There we go. Okay, so there we go. All right, so we're going to, now to prevent tip dry, all I simply do is I push down on the trigger. 
And I just wipe that off. Sometimes I'll use my finger. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to lightly coat uh, our, our victim here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the airbrush and I'm going to hold it back a little bit. I'm going to find where I want it to spray. And that's about it. So now I'm going to start covering her. And you see that I'm lightly, just very ever so lightly starting to cover her flesh. I'm not trying to get it all on in one coat. I am, however, trying to make sure that she uh, is very lightly coated. I'm going to start with the face. You see that I'm, I'm pulling. The reason I pull back so far, and I'm a good six inches away from my, my figure here, is because I want to lightly coat it. I don't want to give it a heavy, heavy coat of paint. Because unlike the uh, the Vallejo Airs, which are already pretty thin, this paint that I'm using, I need to make sure that the paint is thin enough to run through the airbrush. Otherwise, I end up with tip dry, tip dry, which I I've got a little bit of now. So we're we're just going to keep coating her until we've got a nice coat of base flesh on her and she's completely covered and as i said we're going to be doing her top and we are using the uh iwata eclipse airbrush as i mentioned in last week's show now there's a lot of flesh to paint on this particular model So I'm going to go off camera, we're going to paint her up, and we will be right back. Alright, so we've got our base coat on our figure. She looks great. I'm really happy with it. Um, we're just going to now take some of our base color, and we're going to start to lighten it up. Now, she looks fairly light now because I didn't want to make her too dark like she'd been in the sun as a base coat, um, because in the 50s, actresses didn't spend a lot of time in the sun just because they felt that it would it would uh, make them look older and it would add lines to their face and give them sunspots and all kinds of stuff which at the time was really hard to cover up with makeup so what we're going to do now is we're just going to set her aside a little bit we'll just put her off here into camera we're going to take some of our base color which we have in this cup and it is that same color that we used on the body and now we are going to come back and we are going to um, add a little bit more color to that. Now, what we want to do to lighten this is we want to add a little bit of raw sienna and we're going to add a little bit of white to lighten. So we're just going to take a little bit of our raw sienna here. Now, this is going to make quite a thick mess. You don't need very much. That's probably too much there. I want to mix up enough master color that when I go to um, spray the model that the uh, or the secondary color, I want to mix up enough so that I can cover the model with the secondary cover. Now you'd think that we are going to do a complete coverage. We're actually going to pull back and we're going to we're going to slowly mist the the base color so that we have some variation in tone and. All right, we've added the yellow or the raw sienna. We're just going to clean our mixing stick. And the mixing sticks I'm using today, um, these are little metal spatulas that you can get. They're from Tamaya or Tamiya, however you want to pronounce it, tomato, tomato. Um, and I think they're about $7. You get two of them. They're a stainless steel mixing stick. I'm going to take a little bit of white. I'm going to add that in there. And they actually are quite nice. Because they help you to mix your colors um, easily. And by 
turning them like this, you can almost get that, that beater mix going on. And I can already see that that's lighter. I'm going to speed this up a little bit. Now, it looks kind of thick, and it is. We're going to add some thinner to that. Let's speed things up a little bit. I'm going to use my little uh, badger. To lighten that color. There we go. All right. So we've mixed that up a little bit. It's a little bit thick, so I want to add some airbrush thinner to it to get it to a nice consistency. Usually what you're going to do is you're going to add about 60% thinner to 40% paint when you're using artist acrylics, depending on the acrylic that you're using. Now that's better. That's That almost might be too thin, but it is lighter than the color that we're looking for. And I, actually, I wanted a little bit lighter than that, so I'm going to add a little bit more raw sienna and a little bit more white. I want it just a tad lighter than what we've got there. I'll pop that in there. Get that off my mixing stick. Now, as I said earlier, the more raw sienna you add, the yellower it becomes. Uh, so how we balance that out, of course, is by using white. And when you do that, it balances that flesh color out. And you see now we're getting quite a lighter flesh color now as we mix that up. You see the white and the, and the yellow are making it, making it quite... Uh, Quite a lighter color. Now, the other thing about that is that when you're using artist acrylics, the more paint that you add after you've thinned it, of course, the, the thicker it starts to get. And the sooner it dries, or when it dries, of course, then it starts to darken up as well. So there we go. I think we've got a pretty good mix going on there. Just going to check it for thinness. Now, I don't mind having a little bit thicker paint here and you can see i've double walled the the plastic cup i'm using i just want to test and see how thin my paint really is and it's still a little too thick so i'm gonna to have to thin that out just a little bit more run through the airbrush nicely um that should do it i'm just going to use the mixing stick here to thin it out there we go now that's the color i want and when I go to do my lightest flesh color, it'll be even lighter than that. Okay, so that's that's not bad. Okay, I can live with that. All right, so we're going to get rid of this. We're going to dump some of this in our airbrush, and I'll show you exactly what I mean. I'm going to clean off my stir stick here really quickly. All right, so you're probably wondering, why am I doing this as a picture-in-picture? Picture? Well, part of the reason I'm doing it like this is so that you can kind of see it from two different angles. And we're going to test the airbrush again, make sure we got good flow. And we're going to pick up our model, and we're pulling way back this time. As you can see, I'm way back and far from the model, and I'm just going to start to... Bring down my air, and then just pull back slightly. So I start to see the lightness. And I'm just kind of going in large circles here. Make sure that I've got, there we go. And just starting to light her, lighten her up. Come down the arm, across the bodice, around the face, under the neck, over the shoulders, down the arm. And you see she's already starting to lighten up.
And we're not trying to get, you know, as heavy a coverage as we did the last time. We're just trying to lighten up the flesh. We're going to leave some natural shadow areas. And you'll see I'm going in a bit of a circular motion here. There's kind of a reason for that. It's so that I, I kind of get all the coverage that I need without getting into every little nook and cranny, which I don't need to do at this point in time. And I'm not pulling all the way back on my airbrush either. I'm only pulling back very, very slightly trying to keep you guys in frame here so you can kind of see what I'm doing and see she's already starting to lighten up a little bit here and now we're going to we'll go to work on the legs And now we want to check the figure just to see exactly where we're where we're at here and make sure that, you know, we don't want to cover her too much more. And I kind of like the way she's coming out now. Um, there are some areas I still want to hit. I want to hit around her feet here a little bit. And uh, as I do that, I want to hit, like I said, I want to hit around the feet. I want to hit around the fingers a little bit and uh, we'll keep going. And when we come back, she will be ready for adding in some of that red oxide that I talked about a little bit earlier. We'll be right back. All right, now, so we've got our, our mid-tone flesh color on her. She still looks a little bit dark, but that's okay. We're going to lighten that up. But now, be, before we go ahead and do our uh, final color on her, uh, our final flesh color, we're going to take a little bit of red oxide, which is a rust red, and we're going to add it to our mid-tone flesh color. And the reason that we're doing that is because what we want to do is we want to give her a little bit of uh, sun look, like she's been in the sun. And uh, we're going to just take very, very little. We don't need a lot of, of rust red on this. Um, we've already added a little bit of thinner to our mix. So now we're just going to mix that up. And you'll see as we mix it up, it gets to be... A more of a pinky red tone you can see as it's changing already and that's about the color that we want now you can see we've got some chunks in there we want to get rid of those and part of that is because um, the the uh, airbrush thinner is breaking down the paint and thinning it out. So all we're going to do here is we're just going to try and get all those chunks in there. Clean them out. Now if you wanted to, you could certainly take this and strain it. Because we don't need a lot of this color. We only need very, very little. And that's going to give us a nice pink hue for where we want it. And we're going to use very, very little air uh, to paint mixing. When we, uh, when we put it through the airbrush, we're not going to spray really, really heavy. We just want to get in the areas that uh, we know that she's, she's gotten a little bit of sun. Give her a little bit of realism. And that is looking really, really good. Now, we're going to strain this. I'm just going to grab myself a... If you don't have any pantyhose around, and in this case, I do not. Uh, another way that you can strain this is by using a uh, coffee filter, and I'll show you that. We'll be right back. All right, I've got another cup. I've got a little bit of coffee filter that I've cut off uh, a, a bigger filter. I'm just going to 
set that in there. Take my paint, and I'm going to dump it through. And there we go. Just dumping it through. And it's going to strain through, or at least it should. There we go. Now it's starting to saturate into the filter. Now, all the paint that we've got in this cup, which is very little, that's all we really need. I'm just going to clean my gloves off, grab the airbrush, and dump that little bit of paint in there. Like I said, we don't need a lot of paint for this. So we've dumped in our paint, and you can see that we don't have a lot of paint in there at all. So what we're going to use this for is we're just going to... Make sure that we've got some, okay, we're going to get in nice and close. Let's start off, and we're going to just do a little bit around the eyes. A little bit on the ears. Tops of the shoulders. Just like she's been in the sun. Down the breast. A little bit on the elbows. A little bit on the knees. So there we go. We've got our color done. That's all we needed to do. Now we're going to lighten up our color a little bit and we are going to come back and do the final flesh tone on her and then in next week's show we're going to show you how we do the the clothing or pardon me we're going to show you how do we do the clothing and we're going to show you how we finish the face so that it looks like she is uh, uh a damsel in distress all right so we will take our face color again again we're going to add a little bit of raw sienna pardon me and a little bit more raw sienna here. Clean off our stick. You're going to significantly see this get lighter as we do this. You can already see as we do this that her skin tone is getting much, much lighter. Or that color is getting much lighter. Pardon me. We'll just go back to our quick little mixer here. And that'll get that color in there really nice. There we go. I think it needs to be a tad lighter yet. So in this case, I'm just going to add some more white. I don't think we need to add anything more than, than some white. All right. Gonna add that white in there. Again, we are going to have to add a little bit of uh, airbrush thinner because, again, we've thickened it up by adding the paint. So we've added a little bit of airbrush thinner in there. 
Try not to dump it over. There we go. Now that's a significantly lighter flesh tone than what we had. And if we want to, we can separate this out so that we're not contaminating our color with the previous color. And that's what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to separate it out really, really quickly here. I'm just going to take it and dump it into another cup. And that is still quite thick. Now, these little plastic cups, these things are great when you're trying to mix paint. They're absolutely great for this. Again, that's a little thick, so we're going to thin it, thin it up. And now we're going to come back. And there we go, mixing it up. Just testing my mix to see if it's thin enough. No, it's still a little bit thick. Now, part of that could be because um, we've whipped it. We've essentially whipped it with the uh, with the paint mixer, which has added a lot of air to our paint, which can cause our paint to dry faster, actually. So... Uh, it's still a little thick, but I think part of that problem is that it's got a lot of air in it. There we go. As we break down the air, that's not too bad. I think we'll try running that through the airbrush a little bit higher. Frequency. Now, we've got a lot of paint on my glove because I was an idiot. And uh, this happens. So now i got paint all over my fingers. Uh, but that's okay. All right, so we got our paintbrush. We've got an airbrush. Now, we've got some paint in there from before. We're still going to fill this up. And all we're going to do is we're just going to spray it through. So the pink goes away. And the true color that we want is there. All right. So let's grab our figure. And again, we're going to pull way, 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 way back. Uh, on the airbrush, you can see again, we're about six inches away. We're going to lightly mist her. We're going to use our paper towel. And you can see that it's now starting to lighten up some of that pink color that we put in. This is where we're just trying to vary that skin tone a little bit. This is helping us, as you can see, it's helping us to keep some of those shadows on her. You see, I'm constantly turning her. And, and I'm just ever so lightly putting on the paint. Just to vary that skin tone a little bit. I'm just going to grab her by her hair. No jokes from the peanut gallery, because I know there's going to be a few. And we are ever so slightly, you can see that we've got a little bit of that pink in the knees, like we wanted, like she's been dragged. All right, so now we've got her pretty much covered the way that we want to. We're just going to do her feet here. And there it is, three stages to painting flesh. And that's pretty much it. So next week when we come back, we're going to finish her up. We're going to do her eyes. We're going to uh, do the the sort of see-through effect on her clothing. And uh, then we're going to leave it at that. All right, until next week.
Well, I hope you enjoyed our section on painting figures, laying down the base flesh colors that you need and how to blend them with your airbrush. Uh, on this episode, as you know, we use the Iwata Eclipse, and we want to thank Iwata for all their support of Amazing Plastic Scale Model Show. Uh, coming up in future shows, uh, coming up this Wednesday, as a matter of fact, uh, we have an interview with Randy Cooper of Randy Cooper Models. Uh, we're going to talk to him about his career as a model maker, both in television and movies, and now as a model maker building garage kits uh, for you to enjoy of some kits that you just can't find. Uh, coming up next Friday... We've got part two of Jay Barron's How To on Mold Making. And then uh, a week after that, we are going to look at a video shot by our good friend David Stahl, uh, who went over to a local glue factory, uh, Mr. Glue, or Mr. Sticky, uh, the Mr. Sticky Glue Factory. And we he talks to the owner and gets a little tour of the facility. So you get to see how some of the uh, glues that we use are made and we're going to uh, take a look at some of the glues from bob smith industries as well um don't forget you can like subscribe rate and comment on our videos here at amazingplastic.com and we encourage you to do so without your feedback we don't know if we're doing good bad or ugly so you know your feedback does count and uh, we do like it uh, when we do get your your comments and we try to respond to them as best we can uh, you can also find us at our website at amazingplastic.com you can find us on twitter you can find us on Facebook, and you can also find us uh, on Google+. Plus. Come over and join our Google+, Plus community. It is constantly growing. We've got a great uh, group of people over there that build all kinds of models. It doesn't matter what you're into, whether it's a paper model uh, that you're building or if it's a plastic or a wooden model. Come on over. There's all kinds of people over there that can help you out if you've got any questions. Now, you can also drop us a line at info at amazingplastic.com. If you haven't sent us a letter yet, by all means, go ahead. If there's something that you want to see on an upcoming show, drop me a line. I'll see what I can do about getting it on uh, an upcoming episode. Now, as I said at the top of the show, our cafe press store is only going to be operating until the end of June. Uh, when we launch our, our new website, uh, our store will be moving to our website, and uh, you'll be able to get, like I said, T-shirts, um, ball caps, coffee mugs, wall clocks and aprons, and all kinds of goodies uh, to show your, your support of Amazing Plastic. Uh, in the meantime, we put up a brand new shirt on the Cafe uh, press uh, amazing plastic that's cafepress.com slash amazing plastic go over there check it out if you uh, want to grab yourself a shirt go ahead and uh, send us a picture of you wearing uh, your shirt or using your amazing plastic uh, coffee mug or what have you and we'll try and put it on a future show as, as a guest spot uh, i want to thank our sponsors really quickly before i let you guys go today PM Hobbycraft, our newest sponsor, pmhobbycraft.ca. Don't forget that when you go to PM Hobbycraft and you're looking to buy a plastic model kit, by using the offer code AMZ-214, that's AMZ-214-PLS, you'll get 10% off all plastic model kits that you buy on their website. Uh, we also want to thank Vallejo Paints for their wide selection of paints uh, that we use here in the studio. I want to thank FlexiFile, and we're going to be looking at FlexiFile uh, products in an upcoming show, so uh, be sure to tune into that. I want to thank Iwata Medea for their support of Amazing Plastic as well with the uh, Iwata Eclipse and the SmartJet um, compressor. Uh, I want to thank Tena Controls, uh, Ralph Teneglia over at Tena Controls, who helps us out with uh, our lighting control systems for some of the upcoming builds that you're going to see here on the show. Uh, I also want to thank the Fiber Optics Store, who has uh, helped us out with some fiber optics uh, and some of their other products so that we can bring those to you on the show as well. And again, on upcoming uh, builds, we're going to show you that. And Aztec Dummy Painting Masks. Uh, great painting masks from a great guy. Uh, if you're looking for Aztec Dummy Painting Masks, be sure to check out Cult TV Man or Federation Models, and uh, you can get his painting masks uh, from them. You can get everything from the 350 size, one 350 scale uh, Enterprises, everything from Enterprise, the NX-01, right up to the refit. 
he also has painting masks for a great deal of other kits. So go check them out today and uh, support uh, the people that help support Amazing Plastic. So thank you very much again. And until next time, I'm Richard Cleveland, and we'll see you at the workbench. Take care, everybody.